Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this virtual workshop. The coming hour is about polynerp modeling in Altair Inspire Studio. My name is Orlando Sardaro. I'm 47 years old. I'm an industrial designer. I own DesignAid in the Netherlands, and we are a Altair software reseller. I'm here today with Lucas Lagerwey. He is 38 years old, an industrial designer too. He owns Lookalize. Uh, it's a company I work frequently with, and Lucas is a 3D visualizer. The planning, I'll do a short 10 minute presentation on Polynerve modeling. Then I'll do a 20 minute demo of Altair Inspire Studio, working with Polynerves. Uh, then Lucas will do an exercise to remodel an optimized part using Polynerves. And the exercise can be done at home later on. And the final 10 minutes are for Q&A, and I hope to answer all of your questions. Altair Inspire Studio is, um, is a CAD application. It's 3D design, and it is part of the simulation-driven design suite by Altair. In the process, we see Altair Inspire Studio as a second step. So first, you start with your ID. You have Altair Inspire create the concept based on your input. And then you take that concept and you create something beautiful. So that is what we are going to do today. Let's talk about Polynerve's modeling first. Why would we use Polynerve modeling? What is it? Well, we would use Polynerve's modeling to model complex but completely smooth and closed 3D geometry that we can combine with mathematically correct geometry. <laughs> it's a lot of words. But first, let's zoom in a bit on the word polynerve. Polynerve consists actually of two words. Polygon and nerves. Both are shape representations generated by a computer. Um, to dive in a little bit deeper, I invite you to see Wikipedia where you can read that a polygon is a plane figure described by straight lines. And NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational Basis Spline or B-Spline. And it is also a mathematical model. Uh, the computer uses it to generate and represent curves and surfaces, but it uses mathematical equations of a higher order so you can create more complex shapes. So let's zoom in on NURBS modeling. If a computer wants to represent a surface in 3D, it can only be this. It's a tablecloth. Let's zoom in a bit. And the tablecloth consists of lines in one direction. We call it the U direction and lines or columns in the V direction. And this defines the surface. And a computer with NURBS technology cannot represent other than this, actually. It can become complex, yes, as we can see here, but it cannot self-intersect. It can be closed. Here in this example of an earth globe, you see the U and the V lines where uh, one of the two touch each other and makes a closed surface. But you cannot represent something like this. This is called a trimmed surface. Why? You start with the tablecloth. This is possible. Then you want to cut out a circular part. To get this, the computer can represent it, but it cannot mathematically describe it. So it uses um, a sort of an algorithm to impose the cutout of the surface. So internally, a trimmed surface will always 
have the boundaries of the initial cloth. Well, if that is true, then modeling shapes like this will become very, very complex. So in short, NURBS modeling has advantages. It can represent really, really exact geometry and also exact dimensions. You can create uh, complex shapes, which are easy to manipulate by the input curves, for example. But it has its disadvantages. Um, there is a drawback in freedom of form. Not everything can be modeled. And in my opinion, it clashes with creativity uh, very often. As soon as you introduce intelligence to a system, that clashes with creativity. Then we want to talk about polygonal modeling. Polygonal modeling, you all know very well, because if you are playing a game, the game designer, how on earth using NURBS geometry is he going to model this? Not by using NURBS. I can guarantee you that. Otherwise, it would look somewhat like this. No, they use polygons. And the polygons are all connected and they represent a 3D shape, as in this example of a deer. But there's a problem because this looks like crap, of course. You want to have smooth geometry. And that is an extra step that we need and is available in polygonal modeling. What the computer can do, so the polygons will go exactly through the points you click, but the geometry will be somewhat floating in between. So the points you click become more directions than actual construction points. And if this is true for 2D, then in, in 3D it would look like this. On the left you see a polygonal model, consists of only polygons, but completely closed, but of course not so good looking. On the right hand side you see the same geometry, you can see that by the outer cage, the blue lines, but it's completely smoothed by the computer. So this is in 2D and this is in 3D. And you can easily detect that it is very difficult to get real exact geometry this way. But it is easy to manipulate. You can simply build on. You can drag out polygons and a computer will generate new faces. You can connect polygons and create closed shapes while still it is very simple geometry that you work with. Really easy to understand and to manipulate and really smooth. And a computer uses tablecloths to smooth your polygonal models. So it will sort of drape small cloths on top of your polygonal model. If we zoom in a little bit, you see that it consists actually of quads, which are four-sided polygons. And these patches, they have those U and V directions. And the patches are connected in a very, very smooth transition, and we call that curvature continuous, or G2, which means that you cannot see a dent in the transition from one patch onto another, thus creating super smooth surfaces suitable for modeling cars, for example. So polygonal modeling uh, has its disadvantages. So you cannot really draw exact geometry. You cannot attach exact dimensions because the computer sort of smooths it out. Uh, and since you are working locally with polygons, it's difficult to manipulate an entire shape. But the freedom of form is magnificent. And it really, really supports your creativity. And you can add increased complexity to any model. So, 
if both of these methods have their disadvantages and advantages, then we introduce the polynerbs, which is the best of both. You have freedom of form, your creativity is fully supported, you can have the increased complexity, but you can also have the exact geometry. You can also introduce exact dimensions, and it is easier to manipulate the entire shape. With polynerb modeling, you combine a polygonal model with exact NURBS geometry. So enough about this. Let's see how it works in practice.